أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما عبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم ولي دين Translation قل يا أيها الكافرون Say O those people who denied who denied the truth الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون I don't worship what you worship ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد nor you worship what I worship ولا أنا عابد ما عبدتم nor I worship what you had been worshipping ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد not you are going to worship what I worship لكم دينكم ولي الدين for you is your deen and for me is my deen so this surah which is known as surah al-kafirun According to Revelation, it was uh, 18th Surah, which was revealed by Ara'ayta Alladhi Yukadzibu Biddin, that Surah Al-Ma'un, revealed after that Surah Al-Kafirun. It begins with Qul, and we know that uh, there are four Surah which begins with Qul. And uh, this is the fourth one which uh, we are going to take today. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ And the fifth surah which begins with قُلْ is قُلْ أُوْهِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا وَعَجَبًا That is Surah Al-Jinn. It also begins with Qul. So there are five surah beginning with Qul. But the word Qul within the surah has been used many times in other surah. In the, in the things about uh, the surah itself, in one hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is equal to one fourth of Quran. One fourth of Quran. About Surah Al Ikhlas, Kulhu Allahu Ahad, it is equal to one third of Al Quran. One third of Al Quran, how? In, uh, in, in what way? Because uh, the main three topics of Quran are Tawheed, oneness of Allah. So that is Surah Al-Ikhlas, one third. And then Ar-Risala, the prophethood. And uh, then belief in the hereafter. So this is how Surah Al-Ikhlas is one third of Al-Quran. And uh, here is absolvement from Kufr. Saying that I got nothing to do with Kufr. I absolve myself from your ways. So this is how, this is the fourth fourth type of uh, subjects so this is how we can say it is one fourth of al quran it is a meccan surah and our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said also emphasized to read this surah in the two rak'ah before fajr prayer in the first rak'ah as you know that you have to read uh, al kafirun and the second rak'ah you have to read surah al ikhlas qul huwallahu ahad in the very same way, the two <coughs> raka after Maghrib, these two surahs should be read. And if you go for tawaf, uh, yani for umrah and hajj, 
and you do your tawaf after tawaf, there are two rak'ah to be said around or near maqam Ibrahim, the station of Ibrahim, two rak'ah. Again, after Surah Al-Fatiha, in first rak'ah, Surah Al-Kafirun, in the second rak'ah, Surah Al-Ikhlas. So this is, uh, I mean, this is how they should be read. And there is another hadith which says that uh, when you go to your bed, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Faqra kul ya ayyuhal kafirun. Read this surah, meaning before you go to the bed. Until you come to the end of the surah, fa innaha bara'atun min shirk Because it is an absolvement from, from shirk. And uh, it is also said, Kana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yaf'aluhu. The Prophet used to do the same. Now here, uh, there is something called Sabab al-Nuzul. Why this surah was revealed? Sabab al-Nuzul, the background of this surah. The background is, according to uh, one hadith which is uh, given by Ibn Ishaq, and in the books of Sirah, has given this uh, tradition, that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in his tawaf. Four Kufar people, many non-Muslims of Mecca, from Quraysh, they confronted him. One was Al-Aswad bin Abdul Muttalib. The second was Al-Walid ibn Mughira. The third one was Umayyah bin Khalaf. And the fourth one was Al-As ibn Wa'il. And they proposed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said to him, why not you worship our gods for one year and we are going to worship your God for one year. So, in this way, if your God is a good one, then we will have a share of that goodness. And if there is something good in our gods, you are going to have a, a proportion of that goodness from them as well. So, they proposed this uh, Compromise to the Prophet. So at that time, this surah was revealed to our Prophet, which starts with saying, Oh Kuffar, I am not going to worship what you worship. So that is uh, the background of Sabab al Nuzul. Now, here, because in this surah, this, uh, these words are repeated la abudu ma tabudun and then wala antum abiduna ma abud that is repeated twice and in between wala ana abidu ma abadtum so some people will say oh it is a repetition repetition of the same thing i don't worship but you worship you don't worship but i worship i don't worship but you worship what is this repetition? Quran should not have uh, this type of repetition. So in answer to that, we have to say, we have to understand each ayah. Each ayah among these uh, one, two, three, four ayah before the last ayah, which is Bakum Dinukum Waliyadin. These four ayah, they are giving certain meanings. First of all, this surah begins with Qul. And we have already said last time, it shows that it is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not a dictation from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If the Prophet was making this surah by himself, why should he say Qul? Qul, why did, why did he say Qul? It means that someone else is saying to, to him, O oh Muhammad, say these words, Qul. Yeah, kafirun. So this word kafirun is coming from kafara. Three Arabic letters. Kafara. Kafara means satara. Satara means to hide something. That is satara, to hide. Satara. To hide the truth. To hide the nature on which the man is born. That is very important. 
to understand the meaning of kafara. Because the word kafara, some people they would say, "Oh, why? Why do you, why do you address uh, these non-Muslims by the word kafirun?" No, there is uh, there is nothing uh, nothing wrong with that, because this word is used for the believers as well. How it was uh, uh, how it was used with the with, with the believers for us in Surah in uh, Surah Al Baqarah Ayat Al Kursi in Ayat Al Kursi after Ayat Al Kursi the ayah comes Wa Man Yakfur Bi Taqut Wa Yu'min Billah Fakad Islam Sakabil Urwat Al Busqa Wa Man Yakfur Wa Man Yakfur Bi Taqut the person who does this kufr and is the person who hides or the person who denies Taqut. Taqut is anything which is worshipped other than Allah. So the person who denies Taqut, وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ And he believes in Allah, فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْأُرْوَةِ الْوُسْقَعَ He got, he got hold of the very solid knot. So this word is used for uh, the believer as well. That, that we are denying what is falsehood. This is why we are kafirun for falsehood. And they are kafirun. Why? Because they are denying the truth. So mainly, mainly, this word is used for those people who do not believe in Islam, who deny Islam, or who are hiding the nature. The nature of the man is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, remember this ayah. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ زُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْحَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدْنَا Allah SWT when He created Adam A.S. from the back of the children of Adam because from the children of Adam, all the humanity has come. He has taken all the souls from the back of the children of Adam. And then he asked them one question. Am I not your Lord? They said, yes, you are. Of course, you are our Lord. Shahidna, we have given this testimony. And then the rest of ayah says that why we are reminding you of this pledge which you have taken even before your birth when you were just uh, particles, particles, you know, souls in particles. At that time, you have given this pledge that, that Allah is our Lord and we are reminding you this pledge. Why? So on the day of judgment, you should not say, Oh Allah SWT, we were not aware of that. You might say, no, we were not the one who did shirk. They were our children and children and our progeny who have committed shirk. So why you are uh, punishing us because of them? So Allah SWT reminded us, oh man, you have given this pledge to Allah right long ago, thousand, thousand years ago, even before uh, all these souls come to this world. You have given this pledge to me. Alastu I asked you this question. Am I not your Lord? And you said, Kalu bala shahidna antakulu yawm al inna kunna an hadha ghafideen. أو تقولوا إنما أشرك آباؤنا من قبل وكنا ذرية من بعدهم أفتحلكنا بما فعل المبتلون Now this ayah of Surah Al-Araf that has given this pledge the pledge ألست بربكم Here someone can ask this question why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of something which we did not witness, we don't remember. We don't remember. Who, who remembers that pledge? No one. So why Allah is reminding us of that pledge? 
Our answer is, there are so many things which happen to us. Nobody can deny that. But we don't remember them. Do you remember your early days after your birth? When you were st still an infant? Do you remember those days? No, nobody can remember. At the most, at the most, if you remember something when you were three years old. Before that, you can't remember anything. You don't remember anything. Can you say to your mom, to your mother, Mother, I don't remember that you gave birth to me. I don't remember that you suckled me, you nourished me, so I don't recognize you. I don't recognize anything, any favor which you have shown to me. Can you do that? No, you can't. You can't. Because you can't be here without your mother. This is the reality. This is your mother who took care of you. So there are things which happen to us. We don't remember them. But when we were uh, uh, told about that, we don't deny them. We can't deny them at all. <clears throat> because they were real things which happened to us. So in the very same way, this pledge was taken by us or given by us. We don't remember it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us, man, you have said, Alastu bi rabbikum, qalu bala, you have said, yes, you are our Lord. So it means that humanity starts with the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Humanity started with belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our nature is, <clears throat> in our nature is thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shirk came later. Shirk is something which came long after that. When people started looking at uh, the different phenomena of nature happening to them, storms hitting them, earthquakes, so many bad things which are happening to them. So people started creating gods, believing in deities. This deity is for power. This deity is for money. This deity is for uh, health. This deity is for that. In this way, they have created so many deities, so many gods. So the shirk is a later introduction into the matter of religion. Our fitra. This is why our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Kullu mauludin yuladu al fitra. Every child is born upon the nature. And this is the nature. Nature of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believing in one God. And then the hadith says, it is uh, the parents of that child. If they are Christian, they will turn him into a Christian. If they are Jews, they will turn him into a Jew. If they are a Mushrikeen polytheists, they will turn him into a Mushrik. This is because of the influence of the society, of the parents, of the people around him that the man turned into a different religion. But its nature is, its origin is belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the word al-kafirun, the person who is hiding the truth, and more than that, then he denies the truth. So kufr, opposite is iman. But there is a kufr which is lesser than that. Kufr opposite is shukr. So kufr means thankfulness. Kufr means unthankfulness. And shukr means thankfulness. So when you are thankful, imma shakiran wa imma kafura, the man is either shakir, means he, is, he, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or kafura, or he becomes unthankful. So if he is thankful, then he becomes a believer. And if he is unthankful, sometimes he comes to, to the level of kufr. He becomes a kafir. By the end of the lesson, we are going to discuss another thing, which is that the word kufr is a, a common word. And it is applicable to three groups. 
this kafirun kafir the word kafir itself it is a common word and it is applicable to jews and christians those who are known as al kitab and it is applicable to al mushrikeen the polytheists the idolaters the idolaters of arabia those people who were during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it covers uh, ahlul kitab and mushrikeen and if you take ahlul kitab as uh, jews and christians then they become three categories jews christians and mushrikeen idolaters and then there is a difference between uh, the rulings about them so the ruling about mushrikeen is different than the ruling about ahlul kitab who are the jews and the christians but this is a matter to be discussed inshallah as an additional point by the end of this lesson now coming back to the surah qul ya ayyuhal kafirun say o people who have done kufr la a'budu ma ta'budun now these four men from quraish they were offering the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the compromise you worship our lord for one year and we worship your your lord for one year so the answer comes la a'budu ma ta'budun la a'budu ma ta'budun i am not going to worship what you are worshiping here just see that uh, la a'budu a'budu is a is a tense present tense ta'budun also present tense in arabic the present tense is called mubari' and it covers both present times and future times la a'budu ma ta'budun i don't worship or i am not going to worship what you worship so you have to take it in a future tense their compromise was that you are going to worship our our gods so this first aya deny completely negates no i am not going to worship what you are worshiping la a'budu ma ta'budu so this is a denial of worshiping their gods in future so this is how this aya got different meanings from the next aya the next aya says wala antum abidun ma a'bud nor is you going to worship what i worship wala antum abidun ma a'bud now this word abid it is the plural of uh, abidun is the plural of abid it is noun ism in the first aya it was uh, a, a present tense la a'budu and here wala antum abiduna and you are not worshiping this is a noun what is the difference between noun and a verb noun is something which which is uh, solid and uh, the verb which is something which is moving which got some movement if when you say about someone that uh, he is he is alim he is a knowledgeable person that is a noun so this alim is something which is always with him even when he is sleeping he is still an alim so the noun got a permanent character when you say someone is sami he hears though he might not be hearing now he might be sleeping but this character of hearing listening is always with him unlike when you say ana asma i hear that is now ana asma i am hearing now so it is something which is which is at that time when you are speaking 
So when uh, Allah SWT said, Wala antum abiduna ma a'bud, and you are not, you are not worshipping, and you are not worshipping ma abud, what I worship. So it means this word is negating completely that you people have offered me to worship your gods, and you are going to worship my god. So here there is a negation. Wala antum abiduna. Something which is going to be like this, you will not be worshipping what I worship at all. And when it was repeated in the end, the very same ayah, Wala antum abiduna ma abud. After one ayah, it comes once again. Wala antum abiduna ma abud. How you are going to differentiate between the two? The first one is Wala antum abiduna ma abud. Take it in present times. So presently, presently you are not going to do that. You are not going to worship, but I worship. And even in future, the next ayah, Wala antum abiduna ma abud. Even in future, you are not going to worship, but I am going to worship. So it is not a repetition. It is not a repetition at all. The first ayah is about the present timing. And the last ayah, Wala antum abiduna, it is about the future timing. And it is a great prophecy of the Prophet wasallam that these four people who gave uh, this idea of compromise to the Prophet wasallam did they believe? None of them. None of them. Al Aswad bin Abdul Muttalib, Walid ibn Mughira, Umayyah ibn Khalaf, Aas ibn Wail. Not even a single one of them became Muslim. So it means what the Prophet has said through this ayah came true. He said, Now you are not going to worship what I worship. And even in future, you are not going to worship what I worship. Once again, see the difference between the meaning of the very same ayah, but the meanings are different. Ayah is the same, the words are the same, but the meaning are different. All right, now, after this ayah, wala antum abiduna ma'abud, Wala ana abidum ma abatum. Wala ana abidum ma abatum. And I am not going to worship what you have worshipped. Abatum is a past tense. Because these people, they were known to be worshipping so many idols, so many idols for a long time. Look at uh, the time between Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, who established Al-Kaaba in Mecca and then the timing of the Prophet وسلم, the difference of 2,000 years 2,000 years and the Arab peoples uh, they have changed the religion of Islam and they started worshipping the idols even they brought 360 idols in Mecca in Al Kaaba, around Al Kaaba, because that was a long history of them to worshiping the idols. This is why here is Wala ana abidum ma'abatum. I am not worshiping, and that is again abidun is ism is noun, and that is something uh, now established that I am not worshiping at all ma'abatum. But you have been worshiping for such a for such a long time. In the end of Surah Az-Zumar, this ayah again, a similar ayah. There, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Address them as jahil. You jahil people, you ignorant people. Say, Afa Allahi Tamuruni Abudu. 
do you want me to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ayyuhal jahilun, oh jahil people. وَلَقَدْ وُيَا إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَيْنَ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And it has, been, it has been revealed to you and to all the prophets before you. Any person who commits shirk, who commits shirk, all his actions are going to be null and white. And he would be among the loser. But Allah forbid, wa kum min al-shakirin. But worship Allah and become among shakirin, those people who are thankful. So as I said, kufr and shukr, they also come as uh, words and tonims against each other, opposing each other. If you are thankful to Allah, you are a believer. If you are unthankful to Allah, you are a kafir. Wala antum abiduna ma abud, and I have uh, explained to you that why this ayah has been repeated. The first one, wala antum abiduna ma abud, that was about the present timing, and this one about the future. So our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was told to say. I'm not going to worship your idols now. I'm not going to worship them in the future as well. 